Hello and welcome back to another video. This week I thought we could have a cheeky little look at these things called guide plates. Guide plates are fantastic tools which can be used over a variety of different climbing styles from multi-bit to trad and sport to scrambling and winter mountaineering. They can be used for single ropes as well as doubles and once you've learned how to use these devices they can be a much easier way of belaying. Now there are loads of different types of guide plates out there these days however generally they mostly all work the same. The one we're going to be using in this video is the DMM Pivot which is absolutely excellent. So firstly, if you're new to guide plates, they can be used the same way as a normal belay device does for lead belaying, abseiling, etc. However, they really come into their own whilst using them off direct belays as they convert into locking devices to protect your second and they generally just make belaying from above way more comfortable. They look the same as normal belay devices, but with a couple of added features such as the big loop at the top and the small hole at the base. And when I refer to locking device, I don't mean hands-free sandwich and selfie time. You must always keep control of the dead rope with at least one hand whilst using any belay device locking or not. The reason being is that all locking devices, generally nine out of 10 times, they will lock up. However, there's always that small possibility they might fail. So a hand on the dead rope at all times just builds redundancy into that system. So to use our guide plate in guide mode, we need two locking carabiners, one for the loop at the top and one for the rope. Um, I personally use an oval for the top and a big pear shaped, which makes the rope run nice and smooth for the part that we clip the rope into. Now you can clip your guide plate to a number of different places. However, I just use the isolation loop as it means whenever the load is being taken, um, that weight is being directly pulled off the anchors. When connecting the rope, the dead rope comes out of the bottom where the teeth are and the live rope out of the top. The DMM pivot is actually quite cool and most guide plates these days have a little picture on the side just to help guide you. Um, take your pear-shaped crab and pop that through the rope and the wire out of the back. Just double check everything is set up correctly, aka okay, the ropes are going the, same, the right way and that your crabs are done up before you shout climb and take in any excess slack out of the system. Belaying wise, it's dead simple. We just take in the rope by pulling up on the live rope and down on the dead rope, swapping your hands around on the dead rope to ensure that we never let go of it. So when your second gets to the belay, I personally prefer, instead of pulling slack out of the device with the live rope end, to actually pull the whole system tight and use the dead rope end to tie them in with a clove hitch or tie themselves in with a clove hitch. The reason I like doing this is you don't have to pull out excessive rope out of the guide plate. It keeps the whole thing locked and safe whilst they get themselves sorted. Guide plates work extremely well taking in rope, however they can be a right pain sometimes releasing gear. So we're just going to have a look at a couple of different ways of releasing rope here. Firstly, if all your second needs is some slack and they're not weighting the rope or in any form of danger, simply take some slack in with your dead rope hand, pull the rope carabiner backwards with your thumb and just feed out some slack on the live rope. If your second is fully weighted or almost fully weighted, we can actually use our rope carabiner almost like a ratchet handle and simply lever some rope out through the system. Now this only releases small amounts of rope at a time, so it's okay for just giving a little bit of slack or lowering them a very short way. However, we may be in a situation where we have to fully lower someone and this next method is much better and quicker. However, to do this, we need to add a prusik onto our dead rope as a backup. Therefore, we need to tie off our device because we're gonna go hands-free off the dead rope. 
We can just use an overhand knot on the dead rope, which is fine. However, even better, a slip knot than an overhand to finish. The reason I prefer this second method is simply because if the knot for some reason gets pulled tight into the belay device, it would be really, really hard to undo that overhand knot. However, if we have a slip knot first, it's dead easy to release. So now we've tied off, we can then tie a prussic onto our dead rope. I'd advise a French prussic as it runs just nice and smooth. The reason we're adding this is we need to have our other hand to release our guide plate so the prussic simply adds a backup into the system. Just above where we tied our isolation loop, pop a carabiner through all of the slings loops and clip in our rope. Basically what this does is redirect our rope through a higher point which means we'll get just a little bit more control lowering our second. Before untying, just double check everything is obviously set up correctly and then you can undo your slip knot or backup knot. I pull all the excess slack through the prussic, move the rope carabiner so it's just pointing up, it moves it out of the way of the dead rope really, uh, and you may also need just to sort the rope out so it's sitting all nice and neat in the correct position before you lower. To release the guide plate from its locked position, simply pop a carabiner into the guide plate's bottom loop and you can use this to lever back the plate and release the rope. We must control the speed here with our dead rope hand and not the lever. DMM Pivot works amazingly well for lowering climbers because the top loop pivots, hence the name, making releasing ropes super easy. However, if you don't have this particular guide plate and the top loop is solid, or we may need a little bit more oomph to release the rope, what we can do is use our body weight and a sling instead. So using the same setup as we had before, we're tied off, prussic ready and ropes redirected. Take a sling and lark's foot it to the guide plate's lower loop instead. Take another carabiner, pop this into the same loops on our belay as our redirected carabiners, but on the other side this time, and then pop the sling from our guide plate through that. So what we need to do next is attach this sling to our harness, uh, then we can sit back into it and your body weight will actually release the guide plate, it will rotate it back. You may need to tie a knot in the sling before you connect it to yourself and take a small step forward, otherwise if you think about where you've tied in, uh, that will stop you from being able to weight the sling and rotate the guide plate back. Once again, double check everything is good to go and undo your stopper knot. Pull the slack through up to your prussic, neaten everything up and then simply sit back and your weight will release the guide plate. If you notice here, it rotates it back and you can just lower away again with full control of the dead rope. Thanks again for watching. If you have any questions regarding guide plates, please feel free to comment below and I will do my best to answer any queries you may have. Guide plates can be quite complicated bits of kit to use, so please, please make sure you practice all of the skills learned in this video before you head out to the crag and don't do it halfway up El Capitan, for example. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe to our channel below as we release a new video every single week on a different subject. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next week. Take care.